Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're going to be back working on our Steam Stoker engine. Uh, we just started this one up a week or so ago and got it cleaned up. And I'm ready now to start working on taking this thing apart. And I really want to be kind of careful about how I do it, document everything real well. One thing I'll say, anytime I'm disassembling a machine, I like to take lots of pictures of it. One advantage of me shooting video is, is I have a video record that I can go back to, which is really helpful. But uh, anytime you're taking something complicated like this apart, take time to document it. I've already been around this with my camera, taking a gazillion photographs, uh, because I guarantee you I'll be going back and looking at those uh, when it goes back together, because I won't remember exactly how something goes, uh, uh, goes in. Another thing that I'll be doing while I'm doing this is I'm gonna be bagging and tagging parts. So I've got little Ziploc bags, and I'll be taking stuff off, putting them in a bag, writing where those parts came from, so that I can make sure the same parts go back in the same place. One thing, very often, you take something apart, you got a bunch of different bolts, they're the same size but different lengths. You go to put them back together, it's like, okay, well this one will fit, but was it the right one or would, should it be these longer ones or shorter ones? Just save yourself the trouble, document everything, bag and tag everything, it'll make it much easier uh, when you go back together. So today, I think what I wanna try to do is get the head removed off of this, or the cylinders removed off of this. So. Uh, let me zoom you in here and I'll kind of show you what we're dealing with and we'll get started on it. So if you look at the way this is built, you got the section back here with all the crankcase, the piston rods, uh, connecting rods, all that. And then on the very front, you have the cylinders and they're actually bolted in. This is a separate casting. So I think the game plan today is we're going to try to get this off. Now I'm expecting some challenges. Um, these so rods and the pistons are actually froze up right now, so I really can't move them around. Uh, so um, this may be a little bit challenging to get those out. Uh, we got the valves down here below it, same type thing. I got to get them out um, and just don't know exactly what we're going to be running into. We'll be just taking it one, one step at a time. There's a series of bolts back here that basically connect the two castings. Uh, in theory, we should be able to loosen everything up and just slide it off. Now I'm gonna show you in the front of the cylinders here, so you can kind of see the piston rod, or pistons, the actual pistons. Piston rods come up through the actual piston. This is the piston, it's just a cast iron. I'm gonna call it a disc, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but it slides in and out, up and down in here. This uh, has got a castle nut on the top, it has a cotter pin in here, and hopefully, the game plan is, is I'm gonna remove the bolts and I'm gonna hope when we come out, we're just gonna leave the piston, uh, actual pistons inside the cylinders for now, and I'll work on getting those out a little bit later. Same thing down here with the valves. These are the two valves, same setup. Uh, so that's kind of my game plan. I'm hoping this is gonna come apart without too much trouble. Let's do it and see what happens. All right, so first thing I need to do is get this cotter pin out and um, I'm hoping that this isn't going to be too much for trouble. They took it and just bent it straight back in on the piston. Looks like it's bending out. All right, we got it coming. She wants to be stubborn. Put a set of vice grips in here. Let's see if I can hammer it out this way. It's coming. There we go. All right, cotter pin is out. Now, I see how hard it's gonna to be to get that castle nut off. First thing I'm gonna do is put some penetrating oil on it. This is some of that um, CRC knocker loose. I really like this stuff. Um, 
been using it for a little while and um, I would put it up there with the best of the penetrating oils I've used. Got an inch and 13 16 socket on here and <clears throat> oh boy. That is, uh, make sure, just making sure it wasn't left hand threads for some obscure reason. So I think we're going to go take two here on the, getting these bolts loose. Just so you know, off camera, I went in and I removed all of the cotter pins on all four of these and they're all just really stuck hard. So I'm going to apply some heat. I've got my torch. Uh, we're going to fire this thing up and see if I can't break them loose that way. So um, let me get my torch going. Just got a little rosebud here. And it's going to apply some heat to that outer nut. A lot of times when you get a stuck bolt like this, putting some heat on there will cause it to kind of swell up a little bit and loosen up. Just the, the movement from the heat will cause it to break loose. I'm not trying to... Turn it red hot, although I can if I have to. But we're just going to put some heat, heat in here first and see if that'll uh, do the trick. Come in here now. Not enough yet. Flying more heat. So if you're worried about the heat messing up tempers and so forth like that, I'm planning on replacing this nut. I'm gonna make a new nut. I'm gonna make a new piston rod. That leaves the cast iron piston and cylinder head. And uh, the heat really won't interfere with the cast iron stuff. Uh, but all the steel stuff, we're gonna be replacing anyway. So I'm really not worried about messing up any tempers or anything in here. All right, I'm starting to see some red out here on these outer parts of that nut. And put a little bit more in there. All right, let's try it again. put a cheater bar on it there it goes that's what it took and that one is out all right we're gonna do the same process on the other three uh, nuts there and try to get them all off all right, we got that one. Yeah, all right. Didn't even need the cheater bar on that one. Let's see how we get this last one out. There it goes. Another little tip when you're taking something like this apart is uh, leave plenty of what I call witness marks so that you, again you know how things go back together. Now this engine has clearly been into before and there are plenty of witness marks that were left here by other people before me, uh, particularly up here. So they took a center punch, put one dot there, one dot here, one, one. So all these parts are showing over here on the uh, valve rod, one, one, there's two not dots here, two dots, two dots, two dots. So I've kind of got one dot, two dot. Uh, up here on the head or on the, the, the cylinders, um, there's really only one way this can go on, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to leave witness marks. So I'm gonna put some punch marks in here. This is the two side. So I just put matching marks there. And that way when I put this back together, I'll match my twos up. This side will be one, so same thing. 
So really easy way, and you see this little trick all the time on when you're taking something apart where someone's done it before you, it was a good little trick. Anyway, there you go. Now let's uh, look on see what we need to do to get this head off. So next step is I need to get the nuts off the back here. Cylinders here, there's studs that come through here. We got nuts on this side. There are eight nuts per cylinder holding them on. I need to get these off. So um, uh, it's an inch and a quarter um, nut on there. And these are on here tight. I'm gonna use a lead hammer here. Try to get them broken loose and uh, coming apart. And I probably ought to squirt these down with some penetrating oil. All right, let's see if we can get these on off now. I think I'm gonna leave the top ones on for right now, just to hold them in place. Looks like the whole stud's gonna come out with this one, but that's all right. I'm probably gonna replace all these uh, studs and nuts anyway, so uh, no biggie. Whatever comes loose first, it'll come loose. So the studs are just basically threaded on both sides, so side with the least uh, friction is gonna be what breaks loose first. we're about ready to take this try to take these cylinders off so let me get these two last remaining nuts that I left on here just uh, for safety's sake I didn't think it was going to come off but I got it all rigged up now with the, the hoist so it's not going to go anywhere so let's get these out of here all the other nuts I have already removed. All right, so now I'm going to take my lead hammer, see if I can kind of break this thing loose. Some of the couple of these nuts back on here so that I can actually tap on these and see if I can push it loose. These nuts and studs are going to be replaced, so I'm not worried about hurting them, but we'll hit them with the lead hammer. It shouldn't hurt them anyway. All right, it's going to be stubborn. Let me, uh, let me study this a few minutes before we mess anything up. So I've been struggling with getting this head off. It's just uh, really being stubborn. So I'm, I'm resorting to using some pressure in here. I've got two of my uh, machinist jacks in here. These are basically two ton screw jacks. So four tons between the two of them. Uh, I put a bolt on a couple of studs. This is really the only place that I can fit these in here. They're kind of in the middle. I'd like to have them maybe in a couple other places, but I'm going to see if I can uh, apply enough pressure to break these things loose now. So uh, they're not wanting to sit perfectly flat up against that other side over there, but maybe we can get these uh, to work anyway, get this cylinder come loose. Being stubborn. I've got a machinist wedge here. 
I can just get it in there. It'll start on this side. Yeah, that's opening up there. All right, we're making progress here. All right, I'm starting to see some light of day through here, but it's still being stubborn. See if I can pull these jacks on out some more. They didn't gotten loose. All right, we're making progress and I think I see what the issue is. There are two dowel pins, one here and one here that are in here to help align this when it line goes in. And I think that they're really just kind of stuck in those dowel pins. I think once we get past those dowel pins, it's probably gonna come on out. I've got a light shining down through here. I don't see any other dowel pins, although I suspect there very well be maybe a couple on the bottom. So I've got three wedges. Uh, one on the top, one on the side, one on the bottom. On each side, I've been bumping this thing around. Just kind of, I'll tap a couple of them, go around, trying to keep even pressure on everything. And uh, slowly work this thing out. Well, this thing is proving to be a lot more stubborn than I ever thought it would have been. But we are making progress. Let's see if I can get this over just a little bit. Mm. I've gone to some bigger wedges over here. As I continue to wedge things out. I lost the wedge on the other side. That's coming nicely. Well, once again, we're going to have a change in game plan. I have decided, made the executive decision, that I'm going to do what they told me I was going to have to do to begin with. I was trying to save these piston rods and these valve stem rods down here. But I've got drawings for them. I know the dimensions. I know everything about them. To, I'm, and I'm going to have to remake them anyway. So uh, when I got this, they told me that I was going to have to to cut these to get the head off. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to cut them. And then the, everything should just come out the top. So uh, uh, these are just some packing glands. I want to go ahead and. Just unscrew these, get them out of the way. There's a gland there. I'll cut it on this side of it. Uh, let me go ahead and get the other one over here. Okay. And we also got some down here at the bottom with these uh, for these valves. We'll come in here with a Sawzall and uh, hopefully just zip these right off. Big one here. Get down and get this little one. I just got that one through and uh, I'm going to have to go get some more blades. Uh, it took me two blades to get through those two pieces and I'm out. So uh, off to the store. All right. 
we are cut through all four of the pieces. My wedges are all loose now. Get this to come on out. You can see the gaps opening up in the down here on the cylinder rods now. So it's definitely coming out. I need to get over here and push on a different stud. Get a bigger jack. The other one was running out of reach. That's the only reason I'm swapping them here. That's all she's got. We are really, really close now. It's a wedge falling out. Head is off. Hallelujah. That's some copper gaskets. I messed one of them up. We'll have to make new ones, no big deal. Let's see what these cylinders look like on the inside. So let's take a look at the cylinder here now that we got this off. Actually, the inside of this area is a lot cleaner. Uh, than the outside. There's a pretty severe pitting on the other side. Uh, this one, of course, is at bottom dead center or close to it, so uh, it's really not going to matter on that one. Uh, looking at the other side, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up having to bore and sleeve these cylinders, but I'll know more once I get in there and start taking some measurements on it. Now, one thing I will note is um, what my flaw to plan to begin with, and, and honestly, if I had done some a little bit of homework ahead of time, I probably could have avoided this, but what was happening when we were pulling these apart, it was actually pulling the whole pistons and everything in the cylinders down toward me. So we had all the friction inside the cylinders. These pistons are, I mean, they'll move, but they're in there tight right now. There's no lubrication, there's rust and pitting and all that in there. They're on the, on the front side here, you know, we had the, the, the screws that we took off and I was assuming it would just pull right through. Uh, but when I started looking at the blueprints on these cylinder rods, uh, what I discovered is, is there's actually a taper on the back side that goes into the bottom of the piston, and then it's tightened up on that taper. So these are actually wedged into a taper. It's just like a, like a Morse taper on a lathe. Once it gets seated, I mean, it's a really tight fit, so it wasn't just going to pull apart real easily. I might have been able to take a hammer or something and bump them and knock them out, but I also might have busted the cylinders or the pistons rather in the process so um, just cutting the cylinder rods was the answer and uh, ironically when I picked this thing up from uh, the group folks up in Nashville they told me that to get this thing apart I was going to have to cut the cylinder rods and it was no big deal because we we're going to have to make them anyway so uh, no harm done I got the blueprints we can redo them they were not salvageable but I was really hoping I could get them apart without doing that well, there you go, guys. Cylinder head is removed. The cylinders are off the, the stoker engine. And uh, that honestly was a lot more work than I was expecting. And as I get into this, I'm realizing that this thing has got a lot of work to do to it. Uh, I think it's restorable. 
it's just going to take a lot of a lot of effort. Uh, a lot of this this stuff is even pitted and damaged worse than I thought coming into it. But again, like I've mentioned in my previous videos, the stuff that's in bad shape is the steel parts. The cast stuff looks decent. So I really think that this is going to be salvageable. I'm going to have to remake just about everything steel on this part, on this whole Stoker engine. But we got the tools and equipment to do that, and uh, we can, So and we will. And I've got the blueprints. I've got the documentation. So I, I mentioned this before. It's, it's just awful nice to have the original blueprints with all the specs and all the tolerances, even the types of materials that most of this stuff was made out of, hardness information, all that stuff, I've got it. So we can restore this back with confidence that uh, we're doing it right, uh, which really kind of makes me feel good. So uh, ne what's next? I think I'm going to work on just continuing to disassemble everything. Uh, at some point in time, I'm gonna have to get these pistons out of the cylinders. They are more or less rusted in place, uh, but uh, they, we were moving it with the, just with the wedges and stuff, so I feel pretty confident that we can probably press those out without too much trouble and hopefully without damaging anything. Um, it's just going to be take, take some time and effort to do it, but uh, that's what we're here for. That's going to be a wrap, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Comments are always appreciated. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And guys, uh, we'll catch you on the next video.